What's up, everybody? Welcome back to YouTube.com slash Gaming with another episode of Splatoon 2's campaign with Autoseeker Shakedown, A Midnight Stroll. This is the 10th mission in the game, uh, not including uh, the boss fights, which is just an absolute nightmare, nightmare when I'm trying to figure out the name or the title of these episodes, because it's like, wait, this is episode 13, but it's the 10th episode because they don't count boss battles as numbered levels, and yeah, so. Anyway, we're back. This place looks super cool. It's like a nighttime disco neon sort of theme. Um, and it looks like we're getting introduced to a new weapon, which is awesome, the slosher. Um, I've seen this thing kind of lurking around the multiplayer maps. I believe it was added as a d piece of DLC in the original game. Uh, like it wasn't one of the original pack-in weapons, and so I'm excited to try it out. Personally, I'm not a big fan of like the brushes, the rollers, all that. I prefer to have something that has a little bit of range to it. Um, but nothing, nothing wrong with a good slosher, especially for these levels that are designed for it. And um, maybe commenting on the mood lighting, um, very astute observation that we I'm pretty sure she has the hot for me. She's been continuously impressed with my skill. Um, and I, I have to admit, she is well within her right um, to be slightly, uh, uh, you know, I'm just going to end this, the conversation there. I think that's, I think you, I think you get the gist of what I'm saying. She's impressed with me. Um, but yeah, no, uh, to be completely honest here, let me turn on the volume on my TV to make sure that doesn't get too loud for you guys there. Um... To be completely honest, this is uh, the second batch of Let's Plays I'm doing here. The first batch is recorded. I, I, I think I did most of um, the first two um, worlds in like about one sitting. Wait, wait, whoa, what the crap is that? Who is this shenanigan, Mr. Man? Oh, he's like being controlled by another little man. How do I kill you? Can I even kill you, the slosh? Stay away. Whoa, this is like, terrifying. He's like floating above me. And then that little man's inside there just slamming his window. All right, well, I am sloshing for my life here. We got to get out of here. Um, but no, I, re I recorded the first two worlds in, a, I, th I think, one single batch of Let's Plays. And so I went back, you know, and watched them and kind of learned some things that, you know, I, I need to stop saying. I say, oh, all the time. I say, and stuff. Uh, <laughs> and I say, uh, again. But I, I also... Uh, was watching through and was really as I was editing the other batch I was just like dang I want to get back in it I just want to play again like it just sounds fun not even for the sake of recording the let's play but I just really want to play more Splatoon 2 like the campaign's good it's fun it's just a chill experience but it's also challenging you know like there's moments where you really need to think how you can utilize your ink to the, you know, the maximum potential, and especially in the multiplayer. But the campaign specifically, I was really anchoring for. And the dynamic worlds and how each world, like so far, not one world has been like the previous one. And that's really hard to say for some games. Like, usually you have games that follow a very cookie cutter thing. Uh, for example, I've been playing lots of Fallout lately, and Fallout, as gorgeous as it can be, is super gray and drab. And even games that, you know, people would say are, you know, graphical marvels, like Uncharted or something, they do tips things. You know, you, you get locked into a location, whether it's, you know, um, what is it? Nepal, I think, in this, is the second one. It's just always icy mountains and you know, kind of that area. And they do the best with what they got, and they make it work. And I'm not knocking on part of the visuals, because I'd be an idiot to do so. I'm just saying, because of this just being such a fun, wacky sort of setting of underground domes with Octarians, they, Nintendo has the freedom to really have no rhyme or reason to their design. They can just make it so it's whatever. So yeah, it's, it's just really awesome. You never know what you're gonna expect. Like, you never know what to expect. You never know what you're gonna encounter, what kind of enemies you're gonna fight, what to discover. Oh, well, I thought that was the second scroll. I got really excited. That's kind of cute, the eyes there. Hopefully those are eyes and not some profane doodle. And so yeah, I'm digging though the, the green and the purple for the color scheme. It's a little dark in this level. I wish the neon lights were a little bit brighter or shining, you know like really making the whole thing glow, but it's a subtle enough glow that it makes the glisten of the, the ink kind of shine. And I'm wondering, what is up with the glisten of the ink? I just don't, I don't get it completely because 
ink doesn't normally glisten. If you have paint or something, it's not like that's something that would, you know, have a shine like that. But it looks pretty, so I'm not gonna complain about it. It's a little odd. Say that much. Alright, let's let's start knocking these guys out because they're hurting my sponge. And as we talked about, and I think it was like episode two, nothing's nothing's better than a Splatoon sponge. It's one of the best feelings you can possibly have in the game. It's I don't, actually don't even know what a better feeling is in a game. What's a better feeling in a video game than feeling like a sponge with ink? Go ahead and leave it down in the comment section below. I suppose beating a game always feels good. It's always nice when you can just complete a game, mark mark it off your backlog, you know. I think another good feeling is getting like a platinum for a game or all the achievements or like for, for a Nintendo game. Just, yeah, you know, that moment where you have all the coins or all the stars in a Mario, that's a good feeling. It, sometimes it can hurt because you're like, obviously if you play a game that much, you love that game. But at the same time, it's like, I freaking conquered that game, which is just an awesome feeling. Or it can be really frustrating because you're like, okay, I'm so done with this game, I've spent way too much time with it. No more of this game. I felt that way with Ratchet & Clank. I played Ratchet & Clank, um, platinum that game on the PlayStation 4. And one of the ways to platinum it, or one of the trophies that you get to platinum it was, like, max out your skills with every weapon in the game. And some of the weapons just weren't fun. Or you had to, like, hit every enemy with a certain type of weapon, and the aim of it was kind of super questionable and you never knew if it, hit, if it completely registered, so, yeah, I don't know, that's just, I'm just thinking out loud now, one thing I'm a, a little concerned about, wait, to concern every single episode is where the crap is my sunken scroll, where the crap is my sardine, this level's been so dark, and I'm actually wondering, like, if it's on, is there a way to get back up on top of here, oh, crap, maybe we can spawn at the start. I'm wondering if I'm supposed to ride that guy to the top of this tower. Because it seems like there's balloons hidden up there. So let's try something like that. My, my biggest concern is the sunken scroll. I think I'm going to make a new rule that if we find the sunken scroll, we'll go ahead and end out the Let's Play. Because I like reading the lore for you guys. Let me know. I mean, I may not be able to get your feedback by the time I'm even done filming this Let's Play series. But I feel like you guys can find the sardines on your own. Like, you don't need me find the sardines for you. If you really, really want them, you can look at the walkthrough. The reason I like finding the, the sunken scrolls with you is because we can read through the lore and kind of discover more of the universe to get that, the, the Splatoon universe. Now, is this, am I supposed to really kill this guy at all, or is he just like a threat? Because what's up with... Oh, crap. He's like, he's really getting on my tail there. Like, what's up with all that stuff up there? Like, I feel like I'm supposed to get up. I don't know, though. But you know what I'm saying. I think something scrolls only is a pretty good rule of thumb. Because then you don't have to worry about me playing through the level again. Which I ended up editing out anyway of, like, the other episodes. Like, I just edited out my second playthrough. Because he wants to see me play the level again. I'm just getting a little paranoid about the something scroll area. That's all I'm saying. Like, oh, wait, what's up here? Hey, 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 hey. Get off my back, man. I gotta get up here. There's like a secret area. What's up here? Wait, what's over here? Wait, this isn't a secret area. This is just what you're, where you're supposed to be. Now, do you see anything up there? Oh, crap! Physics took, took over there and knocked me off. Huh. Alright, we need to wrap this up. Oh, crap! I got shredded in the helicopter blades. Okay. Okay. Enough dillying, enough dallying. I think we're almost to the exit. I think we're almost to the end. I'm gonna need this guy on my side. What's that over there? Anything over there? Okay. Is he just doing a full-on patrol here? Alright, nothing up there that I see. I don't see any sort of box up there. I, I just... I, that's the thing. Is this level's so dark, I can't even tell. I wonder if my TV's just dark, because this seems like obnoxiously dark. I mean, not like, I can see where I'm going. Don't like leave comments like, man, what's up with your TV? Is it that dark that you can't even see it where you're going? It's not, okay, take it easy, commenter. It's not that bad. Listen here, Noah Kenny. I know your, I know your first inkling is to make fun of my TV, but you need to chill. I have a good TV. Actually, this TV I'm playing on kind of sucks, but, 
not that's not the problem. It's just this level was designed with darkness in mind. Marie even commented on it herself. So unless you're gonna start doubting the credibility of Marie, I say you lay off. You know what, Kenny? You know who you are. See, they, they tease me with these these orange boxes. Because usually the orange boxes have something good inside of them. And you know you're going to get some goodness. But these ones, for some reason, don't have anything good inside. Now, once again, I'm at another point where I feel like there's something good up there. Like, that's like... That's what the sardine looks like. That's where the sardine is. Can I... Ooh, let's try something. When they slam down, let's see if we can put, like, a grenade down or something. You know? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I can just go up on them like this? Hey, hey. Whoa, whoa. I didn't know I could splat them on the side. Have I... Is it... Oh, it's not the glass side. That's the that's the rule there though. You just can't splat them on the glass. I feel like an idiot for not figuring that out sooner. Go ahead, leave a comment. Kaz, you're an idiot. You're a big, big dum dum. Oh, that they don't even smash me if they won't see me through the glass. That's not even like an actual face. It's just an intimidation tactic. See now I need to go behind them. Splatter them with ink. Go up on their Oh, don't want to go in the launch pad though. Okay, 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 okay. Right. Okay. Come to Papa. Like that, though. I'll give you one of my taco kisses. Okay, hey. Alright, this is getting a little bit of a. It's like a duck, duck, goose sort of thing going on here. Duck me, I'll goose you. I, I, I have to admit, though, I do love the. It's just the. Especially, I'm, I'm glad. Let me say this. I'm glad they brought the Octarians back. And I know what you're thinking. Like, that's an obvious choice. Of course, they would bring back the Octarians. I, don't, I mean, I don't know if it's like, that obvious. I think, you know, they could have easily developed like a new enemy because, I mean, in Splatoon 1, we do pretty much defeat them. And, you know, a lot of other sequels. Oh my gosh. Okay, hey, hitch a ride, hitch a ride. <gasps> Wait, what is that? That's, oh, it's, we went all this way for a freaking sardine ticket? Well, now I'm curious what's in the box next to the sardine ticket. So we may just go ahead and edit through this. <laughs> but... But no, I think, uh, I'm curious to see, you know, like, who the final boss is and all of that. Because if it's the DJ guy from... ARE YOU SERIOUS?! This is getting, this is, I don't like this level. This level is not my favorite one. I, I went into it with high hopes and now I'm just kind of like, uh, you kind of suck. Because, yeah, things like that are just super stupid and glitchy. And I bet the sunken scroll is getting over there. But there's, that's the final checkpoint. Crap. I don't know, man. Where's the sun? Sometimes they hide these little things. What was that? Mr. Face Man just <laughs> looking up like, wait, how did I die? And I just look up and see that terrifying face hovering over me. Oh, man, it's horrifying. An octo seeker, they call it. Man, those things are right. Yeah, see, we gotta get a, we gotta get a move on. See, what's this back here? Well, there's the Sardinium, which is the last thing I wanted. I want the freaking sunken scroll, but you guys aren't gonna give that to me today. Well, all right, now I gotta play through this level again. Yeah, a midnight stroll. Scary. See, they even say that it's midnight. They say it's supposed to be dark. Interesting. Well, I'll I'll cut into you guys. Uh, I'll cut back with, oh, whoa, Sheldon has tons of requests for this level. So he's gonna, he's gonna want lots of detail. Um, and now I can get the hero slasher. Let's go back in here. I'll, I'll comment if there's any moment where I think the weapon, cause I'm gonna use a new weapon um, this time. Oh crap, I, I think I forgot to switch it out. So let's, uh, let's go back to the Octo Canyon. I'll, I'll comment and let you guys know if the if changing the weapon changes my opinion on this level at all. So far, though, I feel like this has been one of the more frustrating ones that they've given, like, off the bat. But, actually, I don't want to do the splat doolies. I'll do, uh, I'll do the, the hero shoot, shooter or whatever it's called. 
and see if we can find that sunken scroll. But this one, this level in particular, I don't like those helicopter things. The seekers were just weren't that fun to try to get up on. Like I did, whenever I was getting up, and it didn't feel like I like earned it. It felt like I just kind of glitched the system to get up on top. But maybe that was just me. And I thought the level was just a little too dark. Like they they could have so many more lights that would make the whole thing glow. Like when they do the splat fest. The splat fest is a really good example of how they can do the lights. At least during the cake and ice cream event. Lights were insane and it made the made the ink glow really crazily and it was just an awesome, awesome experience. And this this level is just too dark, in my opinion. So 7.8 out of 10, you know, too much darkness. <laughs> uh, and I'm sorry, like I hope I'm not a downer for you guys watching the Let's Play because I, I want this to be like a fun time and I definitely love the game. Like it's, it's my least favorite Splatoon level is still a great video game level. You know what I'm saying? Like, the worst Splatoon level is better than most platformers out there. If that makes sense. So, one thing I do want to check, is there anything like down below? Like, am I, am I filling up these sponges too quick? That's another thing to be on the lookout for. Yeah. Ooh, so look at this, look at this. If you aim down there, there's some bonus sponges way down below when you encounter the second Aqua Seeker. Oh crap, let's be the devil. Um, and so you go over here, and you should be able to kind of hop down. Oh, can we, can we make it? Yeah, and it looks like, if my estimations are correct, there's our second sunken scroll. Awesome, yeah, so it's a hidden sponge. Um, when you get to the oh, it's perfect. When you get to this spot right here, um, you'll find the second Octa Seeker. You can take the sponge up, and um, you kind of get to this second spot. And you're you're halted by a key thing, so you can't even miss it. If you look down here, you'll find it. So a little bit of a tidbit there for you guys. Um, we'll get to the lore here after I beat the level for a second time. But let me go ahead and do that, and we'll cut to that right now. All right, there we go. Awesome, Octaseeker Shankdown. Yeah, playing through it again with a shooter instead of having the slasher, I thought the level was a little bit better, but I still am going to stick to the thing that I think the level is a little too dark, and I, I just am not the biggest fan of those Octaseekers. Like, they just weren't really a fun enemy. But let's read this sunken scroll. There's a new fish in the sea. Come check out the shoal. The most entertaining destination in Gopolis is now open. Awesome, yeah, I think that's advertising the arcade. Um, we're continuing our trend of showing a little doodle on the on the the page in the bottom right there of the squid. Seems like he's noticed like something's coming out. Um, if you look at the bottom right here of the of the book, the the squid pokes his head up, and then he he jumps all the way out. And on this one, he's looking to the right, and on this one, something's coming from the right. And so I wonder what that is. And on the far left, we have a doodle of um, the guy that runs um, the shoal. And so, so far we're continuing the theme also though of each sunken scroll giving a little bit of context to the new Inkopolis and a history of the current generation of Inklings and residents of Inkopolis where in Splatoon 1 we got tons of background on the actual human race and how the human race kind of led into the Inklings and the Squid Kids and the Octarians and the current Turf Wars we have and so I'm interested to see where 10 pages in now to the thing like are how many places are there in Inkopolis can we continue this trend because I mean we have Ammonites um so what what is it there's the three places the the shoe place the weapon place and the shirt place um where you get your t-shirts and then the we have the oh gosh what is it the 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 food truck and then we have the arcade uh we still need to figure out the history of merch the little guy that gives you all the little deets um, and exclusive gear, and then we also need maybe a history on Salmon Run, and maybe the new, also the new clone of Judd, the little cat. So we have a few pages to fill up that, but I don't know with, what is it, 17 pages left, if it's going to stick exclusively to Inkopolis. So I'm excited to see if they branch out beyond uh, that specific, you know, that specific trend of just going with Inkopolis, but... Uh, let's actually hop over here to the menu and pull that sunken scroll back up. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did enjoy, be sure to like and subscribe and share it with all of your friends. 
and also check us out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all is Copai Gaming, as well as twitch.tv slash Copai Gaming, where sometimes we live stream, and also uh, listen to Copai Podcast each and every Monday on youtube.com slash Copai Gaming, as well as SoundCloud and podcast services around the world. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll be back uh, the next weekday, whenever this posts, uh, come back the next weekday, whether that's tomorrow or Monday. And we'll have another episode for you. The next episode, episode 11, Ollie, yeah, shake all those, all those sleepy vibes out. My puppy's asleep over on the chair. So uh, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, cool.